from military dictatorship to a representative government of the people. The abortion by the military feared of the decisive victory of Chief M.K. Abiola of the defunct Social Democratic Party in the June 12, 1993 presidential election. Up to that time, the fairest and the freest election in the country's political evolution turned out, ironically, to be the seed that germinated into the prolonged struggle that gave birth to the democracy we currently enjoyed since 1999. In rising to strongly oppose the arbitrary annulment of the will of the majority of Nigerians, as expressed in that historic election, the substantial number of our people who participated in the struggle to the annul the election signified their fierce commitment to enthroning democracy as a form of government that best ennobles the liberty, the dignity of individual and integrity as well as the stability of the polity. The fierce opposition to the annulment of June 12, 1993 presidential election and unrelenting pro-democracy onslaught, it unleashed was the equivalent of the battle against colonial rule by our founding fathers that resulted in the gaining of Nigerian independence in 1960. Just like the anti-colonial movement, the pro-democracy June 12 vanguard demonstrated once again the enduring validity of the 19th century historian Arnold Tosby's eternal postulation that civilization and society experience progress as they are forced to respond to challenges posed by the environment. The unjust annulment of a widely acknowledged free and fair election was a challenge that elicited resistance by a resurgent civil society, leading ultimately to the attainment of our second independence, as exemplified by the return of democratic governance in 1999. Fellow compatriots, we celebrate a day that has remained a watershed in our nation's history, not just today, but for every June 12, for the endless future that our beloved country shall exist and work stronger and stronger. Generation of Nigerians will always remember themselves that the democracy that is steadily going to become the divining essence of our polity was not gifted to us on a silver platter. We can easily recall the sacrifice and the martyrdom of Chief M.K. Abiola, the custodian of the sacred mandate that was so cruelly annulled. He sacrificed his life in unyielding patriotic defense of the ideals of democracy as symbolized in his choice by his fellow countrymen and women as their duly elected president. There was an easier choice for him. It was to forgo the justice of his cause and opt for the path of ease and capitulation in the face of the tyranny of power. To his eternal credit and immortal glory, Abiola said no. He demonstrated the time-tested eternal truth that there are certain ideals and principles that are far more valuable than life itself. 
every day on this day, down the ages, we will recall the several heroes of democracy, such as Kudra Abiola, wife of Chief Abiola, who was brutally murdered while in the trenches fighting on the side of the people. We remember Pat Al Federwani, one of the heroes of our independent struggle, and Major General Sheo Musaya Adua retired, who was silenced by the military junta while in pursuit of democracy. They gave their yesterday for the liberty that is ours today. The point is that we must never take this democracy for granted. We must forever jealously guard and protect it like a precious jewel. For a people can never truly appreciate the freedom and the right democracy guarantees them until they lose it. We have transferred the dark, thorny part of dictatorship before, and those who experience it can readily testify to the unbridgeable gap between the dignity of freedom and the humiliation and degradation of tyranny. True, yes, rancorous, debates, interminable wrangling, ceaseless quarrels, built electoral contestations may be perceived by some as the unattractive feature of democracy. But they also testify to its merits and value. This year, we held the seventh in the cycle of elections that have become sacred ritual of our democratic practice in this dispensation since 1999. That the polls were intensely contested is in itself positive evidence that democracy is well and alive in our land. It is only natural that even as those who won and experienced victory in various elections are elated and fulfilled, those who lost are disenchanted and disappointed. But the beauty of democracy is that those who win today can lose tomorrow. And those who lose today will have an opportunity to compete and win in the next rounds of elections. Those who cannot endure and accept the pace of defeat in elections do not deserve the joy of victory when it is there torn to trial. Above all, those who disagree with the outcome of the elections are taking full advantage of the constitutional provisions to seek redress in court that is one of the reasons why democracy is the best form of government invented by man. For Chief M.K. Abiola, the symbol of this day, in whose memory June 12 became a national holiday, democracy is eternal. It is about rule of law and vibrant judiciary that can be trusted to deliver justice and strengthen institutions. It has become imperative to state here that the unnecessary illegal orders issued to truncate or abridge democracy will no longer be tolerated. The recent harmonization of the retirement age of the judicial officers is meant to strengthen the rule of law, which is critical pillar of democracy. The reform has just started. The democracy that will yield right dividends to the people who are shareholders means more than just freedom of choice and right to get people into elective offices. It means 
social and economic justice for our people. To the winner of June 12 democracy offers the best chance to fight and eliminate poverty. 30 years ago, a Christian is campaign manifesto, farewell to poverty, because he was convinced that there is nothing defined about poverty. It is a man-made problem that can be eliminated with clearly thought out social and economic policies. It is for this reason that in my inauguration address on May 29, I gave effect to the decision taken by my predecessor in office to remove the fuel subsidy, the abattoirs and the free of the collective use of much needed resources, which had hitherto been pocketed by a few rich. I admit the decision we impose extra body on the masses of our people. I feel your pain. This is one decision we must bear to save our country from going under and take our resources away from the stranglehold of a few unpatriotic elements. Painfully, I have asked you, my compatriots, to sacrifice a little more for the survival of our country, for your trust and belief in us, I assure you that your sacrifice shall not be in vain. The government I lead will repay you through massive investment in transportation, infrastructure, education, regular power supply, healthcare, and other public utilities that will improve the quality of lives. The democracy MK Abiola died for is one that promotes the welfare of the people over personal interests of the ruling class and one where the governed can find personal fulfillment and happiness. That is the hope M.K. Abiola ignited throughout our country in 1993. On this year's Democracy Day, I enjoy us, all of us, to rededicate ourselves to strengthening this form of government of free people that has been our guiding light these past 24 years. In particular, those of us who have been privileged to elect into public office at various levels in both the executive and legislative arms of government, must recommit ourselves to offering selfless service to the people and delivering concrete democracy dividend in accordance with our electoral promises. On my part and that of my administration, I pledge anew our commitment to diligently fulfilling every component of our electoral pact with the people, the Renew Hope Agenda. We shall be faithful to truth, faithful to equity, and faithful to justice. We shall exercise our authority and mandate to govern with fairness, respect for the rule of law, and commitment to always upholding the dignity of all our people. On this note, I wish us a happy Democracy Day celebration and pray that the light of liberty shall never be extinguished in our land. Thank you all, and may God continue to bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> Thank you.
Good morning and happy Democracy Day to you. I am Maureen Menongwezigo. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Nyamgul Agaji, and today we talk mindset. This is a Monday, and uh, we do hope that the president's speech will change the mindset of Nigerians to do better and become better. Our Nigeria is so precious, and as we celebrate the hero's past, especially MKO Abiola, who, according to the president, sacrificed everything for us to be able to have today, uh, we should also think about what we can do for our country, Nigeria, to make it better. Yes, he has asked us to protect God and protect our democracy mm -hmm. as a precious jewel. Mm -hmm. You know, in 1993, when that election was annulled, Nigerians were totally uh, devastated, to mm -hmm. say the least. Um, that election that was judged to be the freest and fairest Nigeria's ever had, by, both by local and international observers, mm -hmm. Eventually was annulled by the then military head of state, Ibrahim Bahabangida, mm. uh, who cited irregularities as his reason for annulling that election. MK Abiola, the chief uh, flag bearer of SDP, SDP yeah. you know, contested against Mama Tofa. And it was a very, very special moment in the history of Nigeria, which is why uh, the Democracy Day has moved mm. from May 29th to June 12th, and that was uh, in 2018 that uh, the, the last administration gave this request, which has been made by many people, to move it and sort of respect, show some sort of um, acknowledgement mm. of Chief MKO Abiola. And then in 2018, that was done. And he was also given uh, posthumously the greatest, the greatest uh, honor of the land, mm. the GCFR uh, award honor to him uh, by the administration of Muhammad Buhari. Well, I'm um, just thinking a lot. I've been thinking a lot um, for, for, for some time now because uh, what really is Democracy Day? What's so wrong in just naming the day after Abiola? Who, it is because of him that we even have the June 12th. It's because of him that we have um, I would say we have the democracy because according to the, the president even, he said that it is that which happened on June 12th that bettered what we have now as democracy and we've been enjoying since 1999. So what's so wrong in just naming the day after Abiola? We could even, if we must have a democracy day, let's have it on the day that uh, the transition is done. And then today should be as a mark of honor just to name a day after Abiola. They do it in some other places, just name days after people who really, really deserve uh, for those days to be named after. So I, I don't see it. I was expecting that maybe that kind of a thing will be done. It's a first, a first anyway, but it wouldn't be a bad thing. Well, as you said, it's the first, and uh, you know, he has so much respect, the president-elect, mm. I beg your pardon, the, the president, president has now been sworn in. <laughs> president Tinubu has so much respect and regard for the struggles mm. of MK Abiola. He was one of those who also struggled yeah. after that election was annulled. So I am expecting that more would come, but yeah, of course he has to thread cautiously. He just came in, this is his first, he mm. just came into office. So we, we do expect much more uh, eventually. Whether he'll be, it will be named after MK Abiola remains to be seen. Some may feel satisfied that at least June 12th mm. has been honored yeah. by changing that the May 29 day. to June 12th as our democracy day. Some may feel that it suffices. If he feels that way, fine. If he doesn't, Fine. I want I want a situation where children will just come up maybe 20 years uh, after now and, and you know, they know it's June 12th and the first question is uh, okay they know uh, an Abiola day and the first question is what did he really do to deserve a day being named after him and they want to do research uh, but you say June 12th Democracy Day it, it does it just makes you lazy. You just, you just stay and say, okay, Nigeria came back into democracy and uh, that's why we are celebrating democracy. You may not even know what is behind the democracy. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I was also expecting, but like you say, he should tread cautiously because he has just come. I was also expecting that he, having suffered the same, almost the same faith, you know, or at least Abiola having suffered that faith until giving his life because of his struggle for for voices to be heard, for democracy to be enthroned and all that, I thought he would, was going to make a statement even for 
uh, Namdi Kanu, who the courts, because he said he will respect the rule of law, the courts have said this guy should be freed. So I was expecting, whether it is in his administration or not, for him to say something about it. But he didn't say anything. So the struggle that Abiola um, endured and even gave his life that we are celebrating today, uh, must another person go through that same struggle when you know that you have the wherewithal to obey the courts and do the needful? Well, we wait and see how he responds to all of that. He has promised that uh, democracy will be strengthened. He's going to operate within the rule, you know, mm. the, the boundaries of the rule of law. And everyone, mm. that word, all, all, I heard him say that, I yes. think, repeatedly. And we want to see how inclusive this government is going to be. It's still early in the day to uh, make some judgment, I think. Let's watch and see how it all plays out. But Nigeria has the problem of solidifying national identity and consolidating an our democracy. Plus, winning the war against corruption and insecurity. These are major issues that are facing this country. And these are major issues that this government would have to tackle with. Mm. Yeah, well, on a democracy day, I'll, I'll keep saying some things. <laughs> Maybe you'll keep saying we should be patient, like uh, he called for patience. Um, on a democracy day like today as well, I thought also he will talk about reforms even in the electoral process. The INEC, the whatever body is in, supposed to be in charge and all that. Yaradua was bold enough to say something about what brought him to power. Even if the president feels that what brought him to power, the process that brought him to power was free and fair, he should still have said something because people are really aggrieved. All he said that was that they took advantage and they have gone to court. And that the reforms in the judiciary have just begun. So he's interested in the judiciary, which a lot of people uh, are not even seeing it as a, a reform that is selfless. Some people say it's a reform that is uh, selfish because, because these are the same people that will pass the judgment uh, over what happened during the elections and all that. So I, I expected him to to say something about the electoral process, about this democracy, because democracy cannot be democracy if the electoral process is flawed. And people think it is flawed. Even a mention of reforms, more reforms, not even that this, this was bad, but there would be more reforms, even INEC, could have been a satisfactory thing. I, I'm talking as a person. No, you're entitled to your opinion. Yes, I'm talking you are as a entitled person. to your opinion. But one thing I would say is this. He is not Omari Aradua. This is Bala Ahmed Tinubu. And the fact that Aradua told a certain line in his address doesn't mean that he should. And he has, um, he has talked about the fact that there were issues from that election and that those who are contesting it have gone to court. And so perhaps he, he didn't want to be more detailed. He didn't really say there were issues. He just said some people won. And then others that didn't win, next time they might do better, but they have taken advantage and going to the court. Did he say the way? For you to say that people <laughs> who didn't win went to court it mm. means that they, 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 they have some challenges. They will have some issues with the result of the elections. Otherwise, they wouldn't go to court, right? And so that, for him, may suffice. Mm. That, for him, may have addressed the issue. But as I said, he is... Tinubu, not Iarodua. And then, of course, he also um, pledged the commitment of this administration to, um, as he put it, fulfilling every component of the Renewed yeah. Hope agenda. Yeah. And he, 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 he has some sort of hit the ground warning in some aspects, if you ask me. Uh, at least that's the opinion that most some Nigerians yeah, are beginning yeah. to have. Yeah, that much he, that much I give to him. Yes, and, he, and the fact that he is addressing issues, whether it is for himself or for anybody else, we didn't see that in the last administration. Something will happen, it will take months, sometimes it will take years for the president to address it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he will not even address it while here in Nigeria. He will go outside before he talks to Nigerians. But here, I, I can't even imagine how many meetings he has had, how many people he has met, how many mm -hmm. groups he has met, 
uh, because they had issues, you know, addressing those issues. And so many of them, after listening to him, are really, you know, withdrawing from whatever action they wanted to take. Mm -hmm. So that much I give to him. Uh, he has also called on elected, other elected officials, mm -hmm. you know, leaders to do their part in making sure that they perform at their different levels. And you will agree with me that declining leadership, declining governance at all levels has been a major problem in this country, both from the federal to the state and the local government. Mm -hmm. So we are hoping to see, well, cases are still in court at the, election, you know, the tribunal. Uh, we don't know how that will end up at the end of the day. But today, as we speak, we have Tinubu as the president, and these are his words. Mm. So we just keep our fingers we've, crossed. We've always been crying about how local governments have been abandoned or taken over by the states, and they're usurping their powers and all that. Um, again, <laughs> they, uh, I would also say that even if he didn't mention, okay, let me, let me leave it that mm. some of the things he didn't mention may not be that he doesn't have them on, in mind. But he I hope that he's going to do something about the local government so that the third tier of government really functions as mm. well as it should because that is where uh, the people feel closest to government. And if that is still left not to function as they should function, well, I don't know what else. But I know him in Lagos as being someone who wants, who likes grassroots mobilization and all that. And so he created even the LCDAs when everybody else was against it. So I'm expecting that as we strengthen our democracy, he's going to make sure that local governments are strengthened. I hope that when they are strengthened, they're strengthened enough to be autonomous and not be the prong string of anybody or any institution. Well, the last government did um, has some, done some things that enabled the, uh, the judiciary to be autonomous, um, the, the autonomy of the judiciary in the state. So I, I, I imagine that all of that will be consolidated this time around. But let's look at the issues uh, we'll be taking a look at today. Our topics today, the CBN Governor Godwin Emefele has been suspended and is in custody of the DSS and interrogators have been lined up sequel to the ongoing investigation of his office and the planned reforms in the financial sector of the economy. What are the dynamics of this development? We shall be looking at this on The Breakfast this morning. We also are going to be looking at the Electoral Act that has been, Electricity Act rather, that has been signed into law by President uh, Tinubu. How is that going to impact on the economy of Nigeria?